Welcome to another episode of Unrehearsed Research. I am excited to have another guest here, Rick Wilson. He's a marketing professor by day and a genealogist by night. So he has 30 years of genealogy experience in addition to the, the work he does professionally. Hi, Rick. Hey, Richard. Great to be on here. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Rick and I were both interviewed on the Research Like a Pro podcast in separate episodes. And so I heard his podcast and then a few weeks later I was on, he heard mine and he messaged me and so we connected that way. He's done a lot of traditional research and a lot of DNA research. So as we talked, it became interesting to look more at DNA in my world because I, I haven't done that. And so I wanted to lean on Rick to look at more DNA. And an interesting wrinkle in this is that the most studied in my world line for me is Wilson, and that's his surname. So we, we have the remote possibility that we may be cousins too. So we thought today we would jump into traditional research, catch up Rick on where I'm at and get his additional insights on the traditional side. And then we'll jump into DNA in another episode. I, I didn't mention too that Rick blogs and, and I think your various social media accounts are my family pattern. So myfamilypattern.com. And there he has very thorough posts about his research and really interesting stuff there. So check that out for sure as well. Excellent. Thank um, you. For Rick, anything that. I missed? Yeah. No, I think you've hit it really well. You've, you've probably done a more thorough bio than I would do on myself. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I'll share my screen and we can jump right in. I'm going to just jump down to Leonard Wilson. I'll just catch you up, Rick, as I catch up the viewers. But this is my third great grandfather, and he lived in Iowa and Illinois. His father, he was born in Canada where his father, Hugh, had gone as part of a Quaker sect. So it was called the Children of the Peace. They were in Ontario, Canada. Leonard was born in Sharon, Ontario, Canada. And then his father had lived there, but his father was from New York. And the lore in the family is that this is an Irish line, that the Wilsons are Irish. We just don't really have good information about Hugh's father. If I go to Hugh and then his father, you see William Wilson, but this is sort of like the example I use all the time for how messy a situation you can have where you get this really zigzaggy <laughs> pattern back and forth across the Atlantic. You know, this profile is in England, but uh, I just don't have any evidence that this is really the father of Hugh. So okay. uh, we, in theory, we may be replacing this William Wilson with a new father at some point, but yeah, that's where we're at. So I'll let you take it from here and tell me what, you know, what do we want to review? What questions do you want to look at, et cetera? Well, I think you're confident back to Hugh, correct? Yeah, that's right. And you have anything that, that mentions that his father was named William or that Okay. Was... Let's review that. Yeah. Oh, you know what it was? It was because it was that he got married. He he remarried late in life. And I think that marriage record mentioned his parents' names. Yeah, there it is. So this was in Ohio, Iowa as well. Back in Ontario. So you kind of get okay. this zigzag where apparently he goes back to Ontario, Canada to, you know, where he'd lived before and remarried someone at age 82. He's here and it says he's from the U.S. He's a tailor. His father's William H. Wilson and Hannah. Yeah, that's maybe our okay. main point. And you have other records, you know, tying him to this particular, like, not that there's probably as many Hugh Wilsons, but you have something else confirming that, yes, this was his marriage, right? That's a great question. It's possible I'm assuming too much there that he's, he's gone back to Canada. It is this sort of like tight knit, I assume, community, Sharon, this religious community. The, the Doan name is a big name there. And Lundy, I think, is a big name there. I hope I'm not assuming too much. I, I may be. Maybe that's worth examining, too, is why do we think he went there? And what year was this marriage? This was? 1879. And then, so we see him, he married, um, was this? What Esther was Doan was the Esther last Doan. name. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you found Hugh and Esther in Iowa? No, it, it appears that he, maybe she died and he came back and is a widower at that point. And then we have here, this is what an 1881, I'm trying to remember what this 81 record is. Maybe it's an 81 census of Canada. Maybe that's worth looking at just to see if that's got any information about her. Yeah, so there it is, Hugh Wilson, Esther Wilson. He's from the US. And this is uh, the 1881 census. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so there is some evidence kind of tying him to a William Wilson. And, and I know you and I talked about this before. We both have Wilson ancestry. Mine has some Quaker background as well. Yours has Quaker yeah. background as well. Yeah. So it's some of those surnames are very familiar to me, like Lundy and Doan. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. 
It's a great question though. Like if, if there is a different Hugh Wilson living in Ontario, Canada, would I know it? So what if he did stay in Iowa all this time? I mean, maybe that's worth saying. Is there? I think you said you have Iowa? some information. Like you said that uh, the community in which he married Sharon was a small one. So mm -hmm. It's not like he was in Toronto, for example. Yeah, um, that's right. And so that may have, like, it, I would probably look in the 1881 census just to see if there are any other hues there that... Okay, yeah. Uh, so this is him, right? This is him, yeah. yeah. So that's okay. that's the one. If I go... That was Ontario, Canada with his birth range. I guess if we took out the birth range and we said... York, if Ontario. I said York, yeah. Well, the other thing I was thinking about, and you know, some of the reasons why I wanted to spend some time looking at Hugh is because I know in another episode, we want to go into the DNA and we want to kind of make sure we know everything about him so that when we start looking at your DNA, we can look at matches with confidence You know that we're looking mm -hmm. at the right people. And he does go back and does he also die in Iowa, Hugh? Yeah, that's right. He We have death records for him in Iowa. So one and he, residence and then a death record. So you do have him in the 1885 Iowa census, it must look like if you have Yeah, residence. that's right. And, and Esther is not there. And Esther's not there. That's right. So and he's 87. Uh, let's see if it says widower. Yeah, Hugh, 87. And then widower. W for widower. He's and, farmer from New York. I mean, it's obviously very possible. I mean, he he married late in life, and so she could have passed. And you have you found an obituary or anything else kind of solidifying that Hugh, this Hugh that that died in I think you said 1886, was married to an Esther or anything else? Let's see. I think this is all we have for his obituary, which is very short. Died at his son's residence. Got, has the address. Nothing about his his life really there. I'm sure you've probably already done this too. I think the other thing that I would look at, you know, back in Canada is maybe, you know, newspapers.com or something looking for a marriage notice, um, or That's maybe even, or even Estelle, uh, Esther's, uh, obituary there or, or yeah. even a cemetery, something there that says, to, that explains why he's no longer with Esther. Good thought. Uh, Cause then that gives you a little bit more confidence about that his father was William H. Let's see what I have there. We have Mr. Ann Lundy Wilson and burial ground. And this is a, this is a find a grave record. Let's see if that's got okay. more information. Death in September 81. And they married. They married in 79. And I don't know the date of that Canada census, but that she was in the Canada census. Right. And maybe she must have died that year. And I mean, I'm sure I don't, I'm not as familiar with Canadian census, but I'm sure they probably uh, give a, the date that they were collected or at least. A yeah. Race. Good question. Let's see if I can pull that up. Okay. I don't see it there, but yeah, I'm, yeah, it's a great thought. I, I assume that we could find and, that date range somewhere. And you, I, again, not as familiar with this, but may, maybe at the beginning of this section, there's maybe a date of when this was either compiled oh, yeah. or collected. Great thought. Um, it doesn't look like it, but I'm sure that's something that offline can investigate. You know, there is perhaps a mandate of when they had to be census. Uh, yeah, um, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to just make a little, uh, couple of notes here. Yeah. When was the 1881 census? And, and you're thinking there, if there's some I, conflict I, in her death date and that. Exactly. But I, it seems like there's enough things pointing to it. Now, granted, I don't know what's behind the find a grave. You know, sometimes that information can be inaccurate. Somebody else put two and two together and, and, and placed it there. And, and that wasn't, in fact, correct. And then yeah. somebody else starts adopting it. That's but right. it seems like there's enough items there kind of uh, supporting it. I personally would, would just like one more data point for me, whether that's an uh, Esther's obituary, something where she, it mentions Hugh or their marriage announcement, or maybe there are other newspaper mentions there that 
mentions Esther uh, and Hugh together, you know, mm-hmm. in somebody else's obituary, uh, you know, I don't know, but that would give you, at least for me, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable, but it, it seems like it. That's good. And, I could do that kind of legwork in between now and our next episode so that we did the DNA portion of this really confident that it's him. Something else that I think, you know, one of the strategies I have both in, you know, traditional documentary research, as well as DNA research is, especially if I'm trying to identify or confirm who the parents are, you know, a strategy that I use, I, I call it uh, egos, like let go okay. of my ego type of thing. And <laughs> okay. so it's, it stands for earliest generation group of siblings. And all that I'm trying to do is if we know Hugh, but we want to know who his parents were, either father, mother, or both, if we concentrate on not just him, which I think a lot of us do, is we we focus so much on our ancestor and ignore other data points that can help us figure out who the parents were. Both in DNA and in traditional, if, if we look at the earliest group of siblings, that would be Hugh's siblings. And Hugh's siblings, look for, okay. Look for all the data points for their siblings that could be their obituary, birth, death, anything that could identify the parent's name on those siblings. That assumes that you know who Hugh's siblings are, and, and you may not. But if if you were to have, you know, in some strategies, in an obituary, it mentions siblings. In later censuses for Hugh, it might have a sibling living with him. And, and that I think becomes a really good strategy of opening up the network of possibly connecting to other data points that could either confirm William or really cast doubt on it. It's good for documentary, but I think it's the most important for DNA. And when we kind of talk about that, I'll kind of introduce that more completely. Yeah, it, it is tricky. I think these 14 children, you know, they're that big zigzag on the subway map. And I think okay. several of them are in Buckinghamshire, England, and then you get them in various other places. And so I'd have to review the sources to say, you know, do I have real mentions of Hugh and a sibling together, not taking for granted the tree? I also like that that town of Sharon. I don't know much about it, but you said it's a really small town, has a, has a big Quaker community there. I'm wondering, did he live there other than the 1881 census that you know of? Yeah, his early period there was, he was born in uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. And then we have the christening of children that we trust are his children in Ontario, Canada. So you have these children in Ontario, Canada, including my ancestor, Leonard Wilson. So everywhere that you see Leonard Wilson in Iowa or elsewhere, it says born in Canada, even though his father was born in New York. So that's kind of the... Uh, yeah. You know, the, the indication that he's gone to Canada. And then so you have these children and then I guess age 52, he's back in Illinois. So it's maybe, I don't know, possibly 20, 30 years that he's potentially in Canada. One of the things I would want to know is is understanding why he moved to Canada. Did he have other family members there? That might, that whether he maybe had other siblings that moved there, maybe his supposed father moved there as well. Sometimes it is a small community. There may be, you know, few Wilsons there, as we both know with surnames that are very popular, it's, <laughs> it's, it's tricky. But depending on, we have enough data points for some of those other Wilson families, like especially if they came from New York, there yeah. might be something to kind of help us. There's a David Wilson that is, I have to remember his relationship, an uncle or something, great uncle to, to Hugh, who's the founder of the Children of the Peace, which is this Quaker sect. And so they founded the town of Sharon, uh, formerly called Hope in York County. Okay. You know, they've got an article about this. He was born on a rented farm in Dutchess County, New York. So possibly this is the family that, uh, you know, it talks about his history with the Quakers and how he, he branched mm-hmm. off and then they all moved to Ontario, Canada. So that's one possible idea is that Hugh just sort of followed the family, the, the extended family to, to Ontario, Absolutely. Canada and this community. And you had mentioned that this David Wilson was an uncle. Family search. And then let's go to tree f- and then um, find. Oh, and there's the profile. Good. Oh yeah. So Hugh Wilson is, he's kind of my last well-known ancestor. And then you have William. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, in a way that's funny that, uh, 
well, I guess it would have to be through this line if he's an uncle, but right. yeah, this, it's, this, this is the really questioned person. Exactly. But then above it, there's, yeah, so there's a people. So, so really, yeah, I guess this, these lines don't feel very strong, but maybe the place and the names feel strong that being in that little community. You know, the, the fact that he was either the founder or one of the founder w- would suggest that he is, would be written about. And, and obviously there's a yeah. Wikipedia page and there seems like there would be some kind of information in Quaker records about even your ancestor, Hugh. Have you had, was he a Quaker yeah, great at point. that point? I'm assuming just because of that. I mean, he married. Because uh, of, yeah, where he lived, but I, I could, I don't know if I've seen, you know, it's funny that marriage records that was late in his life said he was Methodist Episcopal. Let's see if I can find it. For some reason, I thought this had their religion. Maybe that was the census record. Oh, the one right? in Canada. The Canadian yeah, census. the Canada one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. Quaker. And what does it say right behind it? Quaker? It says Irish. I'm in the wrong. I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong line, aren't I? I'm looking at Hugh Wilson that's with Phoebe. Hold on a second. So what am I, look, what am I looking at here? Oh, and here's a Hugh Wilson, 83. This is the one I was looking for, but I had not noticed that other Hugh Wilson up above the page there. So Hugh and a and Hugh and a Phoebe who are Quaker and Quaker, and then here we have this uh, Methodist Episcopalian, Episcopalian and Presbyterian. Interesting, and that's the he's the there's a Taylor. So that matches. Taylor, yeah, yeah. So that is interesting. I mean, the fact that there's a Hugh up above and that Hugh is Quaker. There, there's so many things here I think that are great. I mean, again, I don't know how many pages are are dedicated to this small town, but the fact that there is your hue within, you know, four or five entries, but it looks like maybe two or three households from that other hue, who is clearly Quaker, it, there could be a relationship, there may not be. It is interesting that Hugh has after his name Irish. Yeah, my whole thing is that I'm, I'm, you know, when we first kind of talked about this, I was so focused in on Iowa because of, you know, the fact that, you know, your ancestor Leonard lived there and then um, Hugh lived there for a time. But now just kind of looking at this, Sharon seems to be this, this really interesting point where he spends a good amount of time. It's that transitional period, like from New York to Sharon and then to the U- points in the U.S., yeah, and, that, and now discovering some of these other Wilsons here. I mean, there's a, a John D and Maria, and there was that other Hugh and Phoebe, mm-hmm. and the John D is Irish, and uh, what is that? Children of the oh, Peace. Oh, so Children of Peace. Yeah, that's right. Granted, I know Wilson can be. It's obviously a very popular name, but the fact that they were so close to one another, the fact that. There's another Hugh there, and Hugh's common, but not all that common. Yeah. There may be some um, truth to, you know, what this is showing. Now, whether or not there seems to be some consistency between all of the Hugh's supposed siblings, with some of them being born in England, there's enough information here to kind of suggest something that I would want to spend more time looking in Sharon reading more about community, looking at all Wilson mentions, looking at all other marriages for Wilson and Sharon, just to, so I can get an understanding of like, who are all of these people? Do they connect? Are there probate records, you know, for, because John's pretty old, as is the other Hugh and Phoebe. It, it would be interesting to see if they mention one another or like, you know, who's mentioned in their probates. And, you know, again, I've said I'm not as familiar with the Canadian censuses, but I would want to look at how large is the Sharon community at this point? Mm -hmm. And are there any other patterns that that you'd be seeing with either other Wilsons, others that have that are were born in New York? But it seems Mm -hmm. like if everybody migrated from New York to Sharon, that may be difficult to kind of parse out. All right. Okay. good. Good thoughts. I like that. Yeah, but there, there's a lot of interesting things here. Yeah, that gives me several things to look at before we talk again about DNA next time. Because I think at the point where your ancestor Hugh was born, and what did we say he was born? Um, 1798 or seven. You can still probably find some good DNA matches, even with them being born. I mean, I have DNA matches that 
certainly go well back into the 1700s that are part of the same genetic cluster that are associated with them. So I think you could find something there that kind of supports potentially a connection to maybe not David Wilson, the, the founder of the sect, but maybe somebody to some of his siblings and back to okay. the father, Hugh, or father William. But I would definitely want to understand the Wilsons and Sharon more, just because when you start looking at the DNA matches and there could be multiple Wilsons in uh, Sharon that are unrelated, but because they maybe marry into some similar lines, they look like they're related. Okay. So kind of getting an understanding of, of the Wilsons and when they first arrived there. I mean, we have them in 1881, but then you said some of the children were born over a span of 20 or 30 years. So I think there's a lot of good information to probably uh, to gather from the community of Sharon. Well, get it. Uh, so I could go and do that legwork and then come back. Okay, so we've done some exploration. You've learned some things. Now let's go look at your DNA. Let's see what we can do there to ready it to be analyzed. And and it may take a couple times going back and forth. I mean, that's usually the way I do it because it's you get clues in your DNA that point you in certain directions and you get additional clues in the documentary evidence that points you back to DNA. And so it's definitely a back and forth. Well, any other questions that you're sort of left with that we should look at, that I should look at in between? Can I look at a subway map again? And so you have him. So yeah. in 1850, he's in Illinois, and I don't know enough about the Canadian censuses. Do they show detail? You know, like for us, it's 1850s when you get to see all members of the household. When does the Canadian census do that too? Yeah, 1871 and later lists for each member of the household, and then 91 has a relationship to the head of household. Okay, so it looks like, you know, they're even worse off than we are. That's right, even later. You know, something else because they were Quakers, I, have you spent much time in the Quaker records? I haven't. That'd be a great area for me to look at more. To me, uh, and I think we talked about this before, family ser search is my secondary research place and ancestry mm -hmm. is my first, which I'm not saying is right or wrong. Yeah. Um, so I'm more familiar with the ancestry records and I always go to family search when I can't find it or when you know, Ancestry just gives me the index and I want to see the original. And I don't know that like uh, a lot of the Quaker records, at least in the U.S., are indexed or of certain locations. On Ancestry? Um, yeah. And okay. so maybe Hugh's birth is recorded somewhere in Quaker records because they don't always record it in the place that they were born. It could be one of the places that they lived and they document it there. Okay. So would you start kind of drilling I, into Quaker records first or search by yeah. name and then filter? Yeah, you could do, you could do by Quaker. Try the meeting records, the second one. That, oh, second one. Okay. Yep. For a location, what about putting um, New York? You start, you could actually go right down to the county and just try that and see if anything, the one county that you suspect. Oh, and they're all Pennsylvania, aren't they? So this is... Yeah, it could be that those maybe aren't indexed. Oh, okay. The other thing is, is you have it on exact names, like uh, mm. Wilson and Hugh. Sometimes I like to just take it off of that. And, and I, again, I don't know much about the, the New York places, but maybe Dutchess County was already in that sect, but maybe not. And so maybe it's... Um, yeah, good point. Wilson in adjacent counties. Let me go to the county itself. Nothing there. Wow, yeah. So I'm just, just doing a search myself. If I just go to Wilson's in, in Dutchess in County, Dutchess, what do I have? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I mean, 1880, that's really late. I guess I really don't, I, I mean, yeah, if they, um, yeah, they might've been there in the 1700s, really. I did find there are some New York records. I don't know what the, meet, the meeting location is. I, again, I don't know enough about the Quaker records in New York, but I'm surprised that they aren't more indexed in New York for whatever reason, maybe because Swarthmore, who did a lot of the indexing is outside of Philadelphia, they concentrated on those areas first. Oh, okay. 
What if I do Quaker and then just drill down on this side? Richard. Yeah, that's a more interesting range. But there's the Phoebe. Um, there's Phoebe, yeah. I wonder what, how, what, oh. Oh, and it also mentioned, I thought it, it popped up young. Yeah, birthplace, Canada. Oh, yeah. Prison place. And there was a Phoebe, I Touches. wonder what, so, but they don't give the actual record, right? No, uh, they don't, unfortunately. And what about the source? Does it give maybe the family history? Oh, library? great. Yeah, I get that. Nine Partners Monthly Meeting, Dutchess County. And Nine Partners was that name, I think, of the land, yeah, the land grant. Born on his parents' rented farm, the Nine Partners Grant in Dutchess County. So that so, sounds like a good book. It does. And I don't know what date range that covered, but she's Phoebe and she's a Wilson. And, the, and there was that Phoebe that married Hugh. Yeah. This is interesting to have her back in Dutchess County. Yeah. And see, and, okay, there's a comment And born in there. Canada. Yeah. Is it, I think that maybe disowned sometime since re Oh, reinstated, reinstated or yeah. Uh, and then she has a certificate to Pelham and now she's living at, at Yonggi. I always, I think that's just young. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, don't know that, I don't know that. <laughs> I was just in Toronto and I think I heard them say young. Oh, that's nice. Um, you caught that. Yeah. Um, but so, but yeah, so she's certificate to Pelham. So Pelham, I don't know where Pelham is, if that's Canada or New York, but so that's what that's Pelham. giving. And then what, go back to the, there was another Wilson listed. What was that, uh, Richard, Richard and Mary? Yeah. Nine partners birthplace. And that's the one that nine partners is in New York, right? You said, yeah, that's in Dutchess County. Okay. And then yeah. the source, what does that say? Transaction. He's just probably mentioned for whatever reason. But it gives the parents there. That's good. Yeah, that's cool. What did you can click on John? See what happens if you do that. It probably just gives oh, yeah. you the same thing. Okay. Oh, a different view of the same record, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like to me, there there's got to be something like a good book, and that book that you said there might be something good to understand who they were, why they moved, and um, where they came from before Dutchess County, because that that book. It does seem interesting. Quaker record, nine partners. And that even may be on Google Books. Yeah, good point. I don't need to wait to find it, do I? I guess I could just look yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Would you search that any other way that I'm missing? Titles there, right? I guess I don't know for sure what, yeah, where the title starts and ends. There, there might be some good yeah. things in it that David Wilson is one of the founders of it. He's probably detailed in some way, and who knows what they... Yeah, great thought. So I, I should check, uh, I'll check archive.org for books as well. I think once you kind of get a better feeling of what's the deal about Sharon, what happened in Dutchess County, that may help you better interpret some of your matches, especially if, if we start to see a pattern there with some of the Wilsons, then you might be able to go, okay, now I'm connecting into this family I know something about, and that might you might be able to go, okay, I just need to go look at their probate, and maybe that's the link I'm looking for. Well, thank you so much, Rick, for coming on today to look at this. I've got tons of stuff to do here and I really appreciate your insight into where we should look next. And I'm looking forward to doing the other DNA episode too with you. So I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to kind of seeing what we discover about your ancestors.